Learning how to tailor your own clothes is amazing, but there's a lot of accessories out there that are really unnecessary, and there's a handful that I can't live without. I'm gonna tell you what they are. I don't like long intros though. Let's get into this. A measuring device, or more specifically, a ruler, a yardstick, and a fabric measuring tape. And this right here, this is a fabric measuring tape. And I like to use a combination of all three. I think you should absolutely use a combination of all three. And to kind of unpackage that a little bit more, you're gonna use a fabric measuring tape whenever you're doing things like measuring the side seam on a dress shirt or a t-shirt, or you want to, let's say, taper a pair of jeans and you wanna measure where it is that your knee is, you need, to, you need to know where that is, that's super important. That's when you're gonna use a fabric measuring tape. Now, where it kind of drops the ball a little bit is it almost ends up being way too long to do very short, very small measurements. Well, that's where a nice ruler comes into play because what you can use a ruler for is, let's say you want to put a nice, uh, a nice V taper on the side of a t-shirt. Well, what you can do is just throw your ruler right there, measure it to a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch or whatever that measurement is for you. And it's nice and compact and it fits just perfectly in that spot. And you might be thinking, okay, well, where does the yardstick come into play in all of this? Because can't I just use a ruler in place of a yardstick? Well, here's what I like to use a yardstick for. I like to use a yardstick whenever I'm doing any kind of long tapering. I like to use a yardstick if I'm tapering a pair of dress pants or even a pair of jeans and I wanna put a nice long straight line on there and I don't wanna have to worry about using a small ruler and let's say putting the ruler down and then drawing but then I don't have enough room because my ruler's not long enough. The line that I'm drawing is longer than 12 inches so then I gotta like move the ruler down and then continue on with that line that I'm trying to draw. No, just get a yardstick. I got this yardstick at Walmart for like $4 anyway. They're super cheap. So get one. A spring action zigzag presser foot. That's a mouthful, I know. And you're like, what are you even talking about? That's weird. It doesn't make any sense. Well, okay. A spring action zigzag presser foot is, well, just a presser foot. What is a presser foot? A presser foot is that little piece of metal that attaches to your sewing machine that holds your garment in place. What it kind of does is says, hey, Garmin, stay right there. You are not moving. We're putting a stitch in you. I don't want you shifting on me from side to side. I don't want you moving forward and back without my express written consent. So just stay right there. And your sewing machine came with a presser foot, most likely. And to be very blunt and honest with you, that presser foot that came with your sewing machine, you can just keep it on there. You can use it for like, 99.5% of the projects that you're going to do. If you're just tailoring your clothes, you can just use that presser foot. Now, where it gets a little bit complicated and where it starts to get easier is a spring action zigzag presser foot. Now, let's say you're doing something like tapering a pair of denim jeans or you're putting a new hem on your denim jeans what's going to end up happening is denim is really thick especially at the side seams and your sewing machine might struggle a little bit to get over that big hump of fabric that presser foot that you have on there it's got kind of a downfall it's got a weakness it doesn't really move up or down at all it'll pivot like this so it'll pivot up, here's your jeans, you're going along, well, you're kind of pushing it up, but it doesn't go up, it just tilts up like that. So, well, what are you supposed to do? That is where a spring action zigzag presser foot really does an amazing job of solving a really big problem because what it does is there's a button right on the side of it that you push, boop, push it in like that, and it's gonna move that presser foot up, allowing your garment to go right underneath there without having to pivot or anything like that. And then once you get over that hump of fabric or whatever it is that you're working with, it'll just pop right out, presser foot's gonna go down to its normal spot, and mm, you were just on your way, you are good to go. Sewing pins are a big must in regards to what it is that you wanna pick up. Now, there's a couple different kinds of sewing pins out there, and to elaborate on that a little bit more, yes, you can get regular sewing pins. Those are gonna be game changers for you. Those will work just fine. But 
I want to kind of expand on that, get some longer sewing pins. More specifically, I'm going to say like an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter. And the reason for that is because what you want to do is it's getting cold outside. You're going to start altering a lot of your winter clothes and a lot of your winter clothes, especially your coats, are a lot thicker, aren't they? And I see this in the comment section all the time. Yes, technically you can use safety pins, but I advise against safety pins. Well, more specifically, there's a time and a place for them. Now, let's say you are going to be altering a pair of denim jeans that you have, and you're not really sure if you have the right measurements, if you have the correct measurements, or really at the end of the day, if you're just going to like the fit. Pinking shears, and don't let your kids steal your pinking shears thinking that they're their art scissors. That happened. It's, oh, long story, that was a fun conversation. What about you? Do you know where my pinking shears are? Do you know where my pinking shears went? Are you using my pinking shears on your sewing project? What do you think of that? Do you, do you want to go find my pinking shears? Yeah, let's go find my pinking shears. You want to help me go find my pinking shears? I bet you do want to go help me find my pinking shears. Let's go find my pinking shears. Yeah, let's go. I don't know who took my pinking shears, but they got to be somewhere around here, right? Where do they go? And if you don't know what pinking shears are, that's totally okay. When I started, I didn't know what pinking shears were. And then I learned what they were and I was like, well, those are stupid. I don't want to buy special scissors. That's dumb. It's not dumb. You should get some. Now, what pinking shears do is they cut a zigzag pattern in your garment that's going to prevent it from fraying on you later down the road. And to kind of back up and unravel that a little bit more, the one thing that fabric hates is being cut. It does not like to be cut at all. When you cut fabric, it starts to fray on you. It gets all angry on you like, rear, rear, rear. what are you doing? Rear, rear. A seam ripper or more specifically, a big seam ripper. And one thing that I didn't do was use a big seam ripper in the beginning. I used a small seam ripper, this itty bitty little teeny looking thing. And what a seam ripper does is it rips out your seams or more specifically, it rips out those angry mistakes that you made in your garment thinking that you got it right, but you didn't. So then you got to go take out that stitch all angrily like, oh, this is so stupid. I can't believe I made Mess this up well it's fine it's totally fine everybody makes mistakes but what's going to happen or what can happen is when you're using a seam ripper especially if it's too small well your fingers are going to get cramps in them so not only are you really mad that you just messed up your garment thinking that you got it right now your fingers are cramping up sitting there like oh I gotta rip this stupid stitch out and you'll get halfway through and then you're like whatever this is dumb this is stupid. I'm not even gonna finish this. I'm gonna throw my garment away. Well, no, you don't have to do that. It's easily fixable. Just get a bigger seam ripper or more specifically an ergonomically correct seam ripper. I just got this seam ripper like three weeks ago and this thing is amazing. It fits comfortably, not sponsored, it fits comfortably in my hands. I absolutely love it and best of all, it works really well, so I can just rip everything out of there in a couple of minutes, fix my mistakes, and then carry on with my day. We're gonna go alter the waist of a pair of jeans and watch till the very end and remember that seam ripper because, oh, this long story short, it's going to come in handy later on. And in the event that I had a seam ripper that was, well, bigger, we could have avoided all of that, but we didn't. It'll make sense when you get over there. I'll see you on the other side. SD out, see ya.